What's up guys, it's your boy the Black Legend here. Hey, another tip for the back country. Let's talk about something very, very important. You might be able to hear it behind me. Water, how to get it in the back country, how to treat it properly, make sure you safe to drink, and uh, you know, how to stay hydrated out here. It's a few ways that you can get water, clean it properly. It's so many streams and creeks and stuff throughout the back country. Shouldn't have that much problem finding water unless you're going through a drought. It's been a drought in this area, so a couple of places that I passed yesterday that showed on my guide that it should be water were dry. So uh, it's important to get as much water as you can when you have a reliable source of it and carry it to the next spot. Always uh, rehydrate at the water source. If you got to drink a pint, drink a liter of water at the water source, then refill it. Keep moving. I think that would be best to do, man. You don't want to get caught without any water in the back country. I had a uh, about a 10 mile section I came through in the Smokies one time without water and man I got really thirsty once I knew it wasn't any around and I didn't have any left uh, the thirst just got like stronger and stronger and stronger so it's always good to stay hydrated keep you some water out here because you never know when the next source is going to be reliable so um, with that being said first way to clean water uh, old school boil it um, get it to a running boil should be good to go all the bacteria pathogens should be killed off uh, and should be safe to drink. Uh, if you don't have access to fire right there, like you're not really supposed to start a bunch of fires in the Smokies where I'm at now. Um, so luckily this place has a fire pit, but it was raining yesterday, so no fire for me. Luckily, I have this um, second way to clean water, a filter. Uh, I have this Catadyne Be Free, a little bit dirty looks like, but hey man, I've been out here in the woods with it. Um, it has a filter right here, this right here. Fill it up, squeeze it out into a clean water bottle. You got clean water, good to drink. Um, you can drink straight out of this if you want. Water's coming out clean. I think it filters down to 0 0.02 microns or something like that. So gets all the bacteria and pathogens out. Don't have to worry about it. Uh, you may have to, I don't know if you have to back flush this one. Some of them you have to back flush. Speaking of those, a soya. I put a picture of it right here. Um, you have your soya mini. You have your soya squeeze. You can hook both of them up to your water bottle, uh, fill it up with water, drink straight out of it, clean water. Only thing about the soya squeeze and the, uh, the soya mini is they have a little gasket on it. Make sure you don't over tighten it on the water bottle because it can come loose. Uh, I had one to start my Appalachian Trail hike and I think I got to maybe the second day and I messed mine up because I screwed it onto the water bottle just entirely too tight and uh, my gasket came off and it's pretty much useless after that. So. Um, you have to be mindful of that. Also with the soya squeeze, soya mini, that gasket, if it gets too cold um, below freezing temperatures or something like that, it can freeze and break. Uh, and once again, useless. So I would suggest if you are uh, camping uh, somewhere where it's real cold at night, um, just put it down in your sleeping bag with you, keep it warm, um, you know, so it don't freeze. Also, I would do my batteries like that too, my cell phone and my, my portable battery charges and stuff. Just try to keep it in your sleeping bag during cold nights. Just another tip. Uh, Soya squeeze, that's the second way, you know, uh, along with this catadine, it has a couple more filters on the market um, as far as that, where you can filter water. Also, you can use tablets, iodine tablets. I would use those no more than a few days. Um, you don't want to have a bunch of iodine in your, in your blood. So um, short trips work perfectly fine. I use them as well on my Appalachian Trail uh, hike. They're pretty cheap, they're cheaper than buying something like this this is about i guess like 30 bucks i have a bigger version of it it's around like 40 or 50 bucks uh three liter but that was just kind of overkill i didn't want to carry three liter out here with just me um so yeah uh you can use iodine tablets fourth way they have some some tablets called aqua mirror um you mix in a couple tablets wait a few minutes like 10 15 minutes you put in a couple more tablets wait about 10 15 more minutes water's good to drink um perfectly safe to drink only thing about that, with the iodine as well, leaves a little funny little taste to it. Just a little, you can taste the, the chemicals in it a little bit. So to my people that don't like using chemicals, want to keep it all natural, um, this would be perfect for you. Or boiling water, um, as I said before. So uh, yeah, that, those are your ways to get water in the back country. Make sure it's safe. Now, I will tell you this, full disclosure, as a through hiker, after I got around about five or 600 miles in, I kind of stopped filtering water. I would not suggest that to anybody. You kind of got to be really careful about that because coming through, especially a trail like the AT where you got hundreds of hikers on it per day, um, you have to be mindful of the other hikers and their practices as well. Everybody doesn't practice leave no trace, um, sadly. 
So uh, it was a guy that I hiked with for a while. You know, uh, well, I didn't hike with him, but we hiked in the same vicinity for a while. He bragged about taking water dumps down in the rivers and stuff. And I'm like, bro, that's where we get our drinking water from. So you gotta be mindful that it is people out there like that. So if you are gonna get your water somewhere and, and don't filter it, don't treat it, just be mindful of where you're getting it from. Try to stay in higher elevations. I'm at 3,000 feet right now. If I was gonna get some water and not treat it at all, I would probably wanna be at least 4,500, 5,000 feet up in the elevation. Um, it's gonna be less people up there. Um, you're gonna have just less chance of contamination. But you also gotta keep in mind is it could be a dead animal up upstream. Um, so, you know, you just gotta be really careful. And that's a big, that's a big gamble that you're taking, not treating your water out here. Especially like if you're down in the southern sections of the Appalachian Trail when it's a group of people, it's a hundred more people in a bubble. Um, they have a higher risk of giardia and, and you know waterborne illnesses and things like that just from people that's just starting out not knowing how to um you know be in the back country properly some people might wash their dishes right there in the creek where everybody gets the drinking water from and somebody might wash their body right there so you just got to really be mindful if you're not treating water once again i don't suggest that but if it all you know if, you, if you, that's your only choice your only option at that point just kind of be mindful of where you're getting from yeah, man, um, those are the ways you fit to your water in the backcountry. Hope this helps. Um, and yeah, love and light, let's get to it. As you can see, I'm all packed up and ready to go. Um, and we're headed on, Mount the Sea Trail. Tips on hiking in the backcountry. It's your boy, the Black Alaskan. Peace.